Good morning. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. It's Monday, September 28th. I cannot believe we are at the end of the month and looking at another new month starting. It is a little overcast here on the East Coast at 7.30 a.m. And I'm so glad to see many of you joining me here on Zoom. And of course, we have our Tribe on Facebook Live and I'm gonna give everyone a minute to jump on that too. So I'm Anna Gibbs, this is your Monday Morning Mojo session, an opportunity to take a look at some things from a different perspective, taking a look at some things maybe we want to call into our lives and giving us all an opportunity to get the week going in a way that um, will, I think, empower us to do something that will make our lives different or, and better than it could have been. So this morning, I want to open up with a quote. And I found this quote by Mary Oliver. And the quote is, tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life. So if you are taking notes, I know a lot of you like to do that. You may wanna jot that down. So the quote is, tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? So if I was to give you an opportunity to think about that this morning and answer that question, what would come to mind? What would you be writing down at this very moment? And I'm going to give you another quote, a little bit longer from Viktor Frankl. And if you're not familiar with Viktor Frankl, he is, uh, or was, I'm not sure if he's still with us. Um, he was a Holocaust survivor and um, he wrote an amazing book, um, which just shot right on my head. And I want to make sure I get it right. So as I read the quote, I'll, I'll look it up for you. And if someone knows, you can put it in the in the chat. I'm nothing but authentic. I'll tell you that. I'm not going to ever pretend I know what I'm talking about. So the quote starts with this. This is the core of the human spirit. If we can find something to live for, if we can find some meaning to put at the center of our lives, even the worst kind of suffering becomes bearable. That is by Viktor Frankl. And I believe the book is The Meaning of Life. Let's just see. Man's Search for Meaning. See, I told you I wanted to be sure I got it right. Man's Search for Meaning, Victor Frankl. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a hefty read, but it is, it is really a powerful book. Um, so here's where we are at this morning. I wanna talk to you about something that is, um, probably on my heart and mind a lot and something that I talk about a lot because it's at the core, in my opinion, of everything that we could look to do with our lives and that's purpose. And I believe that there is this powerful force within every one of us and it is just beckoning to come forward. This force in you is, is just dying to get out. <laughs> it's dying to break free. And I have some notes that I took in my journal. So, uh, you know, I, I wanna be able to really convey some things that I put in my journal for you. Um, I think that this powerful force that's just come, just begging to come out, um, it, it's really stuck because we lack the confidence to let it come through. We lack the self-assured, uh, confident um, it, vision for our lives. And we try to convince ourselves that maybe we don't have uh, the right to let those things come through. That maybe we don't have the ability to act on the dreams that we have. And that is the furthest from the truth. We actually can do so much more than what we allow ourselves to show the world. And so I become passionate about this because I know the difference personally. Um, you know, I've shared uh, with this group and, and I'm uh, happy to, to share more of my story um, because that's another thing I realized too. When I share my story, I believe I give you permission to share yours. And we all have a story. The question is, how do we use the story? If we allow the story to play over and over in our minds and keep us stuck, 
then the story didn't have any purpose. But if we use our story to inspire other people to make changes in their lives, if we use the story to provide lessons that we've learned as an opportunity to help the next person do something easier or with a little less pain, then we're allowing our story to do great things. So I, I left a, an abusive first marriage 21 years ago. Nope, 22 years ago. And um, the person I am today is not the person I was 22 years ago or 30 years ago um, when I got into that relationship. And I'm not the person I was even three years ago or yesterday because I am always growing and evolving and so are you. And so I think that um, I went through a lot of trauma and I went through a lot of self-doubt and I allowed myself to play small because I was programmed to think that that's what I was here to do. I was programmed to think that I should play small because it makes someone else feel more comfortable. And that lack of confidence was keeping me in a box and that lack of confidence and playing small was not allowing my gifts to come through, right? And I was allowing that little voice in our head. Do you know what that little voice is called? Fear. The voice is called fear, F-E-A-R, fear. And that little voice, sometimes I will say, the little voice does think it's helping you. Sometimes the little voice thinks that it's protecting you, right? So um, don't be mad at it, but it's important to understand it. And this little voice fear, it sits right here and it starts to tell you, no, no, no. Oh no, you can't say that. No, you can't do that. No, no, nobody wants to hear that. No, you don't know. See, they don't need you to do that. Um, you can't start a, a Facebook thing and, and think anyone's going to want to hear anything you have to say. You can't write a book. You can't speak up at that meeting. You can't put your project out there in front of everyone else. You, you know the drill, right? So that little voice, that fear, that little fear voice is just keeping you back because it doesn't know any better and it lacks the confidence and it lacks the vision of really what you're here to do. So when we can act upon our confidence, um, we get clearer about our purpose too. So Jill, I see your note in the chat. I don't see anyone trying to get into the, um, from the waiting room. It would, it would alert me. So I'll keep looking out for that. Okay, because he was chatting with me on the text that he was trying to get in. Okay. Yeah, no, that's okay. Um, so yeah, Jill and right. my people to join us this morning, which I think is awesome. And again, I would love for all of you to do the same. Um, so as we get clearer about our purpose, our world starts to open up. And maybe right now, some of you have been working on that. I've been talking about it here on Mojo a lot. Um, and it seems to be the hot topic, right? So whether you are getting clearer about it or not, whether you're acting on it or not, because that's, that's, those are two different things, right? Um, whether you're feeling blocked, whether you're feeling a little bit fuzzy about what it is. Um, and, and, you know, maybe even you're feeling like I am living out my passion and my purpose every day, but what if it's time to take it to a new level? See, wherever you're at in this process, it's time to take action. It's time to get to the next level, right? So whether you need to figure it out, whether you need to get clearer, whether you need to level up, I think that right now, this is the time. And this is why I talk about purpose a lot, because again, I, as I said, it's the core, it's at the core of living our best life. You only come through here once, peeps. And so you get to decide, do you, do you wanna live your life in a comfortable average way? That's up to you. However, I think when we allow ourselves to live, live life out loud in a bigger way, we experience things that we could never have predicted. And I am living my life in such a purposeful, meaningful way today. I never could have imagined a life like this 30 years ago, 28 years ago, 20 years ago. It, it really is astonishing to me that as I allowed myself to start to trust my own knowledge of myself that I was able to start to tap into the gifts that I think were divinely given to me from the very beginning. You all have these amazing gifts, whatever they are, right? So maybe it's not to speak on a big stage. Maybe it's not to write a book. Maybe it's not to do your own, you know, talk show or anything quite like that, but perhaps it is to get in the lane of providing excellent service. And maybe it's about providing 
knowledge and leadership to the people you work with. Maybe it's to pour your heart into being a great parent and raising amazing kids who are going to grow up to do things to change the world. And maybe it's about going in every day, no matter where you work or what you do with such pride and energy that inspires people around you to be better people. See, no matter what it is, it's never insignificant. It's never small. And it's always about where you find your joy, because that's where the divine says, ah, they have a clue and they get it now. Now they're in their lane. So let's give them more opportunity. Let's give that person some more abundance. Let's give them some more um, uh, people in their world who can help them get to the next level. See, for me, God, the divine, the universe, whatever you want to call it, is waiting for you to stand up and say, I want more. I get it. And I'm ready to live up to what you have promised me. I mean, do you get a promotion at work just for showing up? Or do you get a promotion at work because you show up? And you produce results. That's you gotta have a job in order. <laughs> okay. So maybe this is what you need to hear this morning about showing up and being confident, not playing small as you're looking for that next opportunity. Now, I'm not saying the job market is easy right now. However, just take some time to examine how are you showing up? What does that resume look like? Are you confidently showing people your skill set? Are you confidently showing people why you're a value to their organization? Don't play average. Don't play mediocre right now. You need to show up in a big way to get noticed. Yeah. I think now more than ever, this world needs people like us. Now more than ever, the world needs leaders. They need skilled, intelligent, creative spirits. And so if we do not live up to our highest purpose, then we can't give the world what we're here to provide. And that in itself is fulfilling your highest purpose. So, and I get it because I get it. This conversation sometimes can make, you know, my head spin too, right? Like, well, how do I know I'm really on the right track? You'll know because things start like firing off in all directions. And if you listen to your body, if you listen to your emotions, you'll know when you're on the right track. Um, and, and so I get it. This can be a daunting task. And if I can help some of you really get into a process of finding and discovering your purpose, just reach out. You know, I do, I do coach one-on-one -on -one with people. They ha I've, uh, I work with clients. Uh, we'll be doing a group coaching on this uh, subject probably in just a couple of weeks and just getting some final things done on that. Um, but I think it's time to get crystal clear because, you know, this is the time. This is, this is the time to show up and really give the world what it's waiting for. And I think one of our biggest blocks to fulfilling our purpose, as I said a few minutes ago, is that self-confidence. Um, and it was my roadblock for a long time. It was definitely what kept me back. I, you know, that feeling of not being enough. And when I did the work, and I can't say that I just got up one day and said, okay, I'm not going to think that anymore. I had to do the work. I had to do a considerable amount of work on me and on my mindset. But when I did, wow, did things start opening up around me? And did I start to see with a clearer vision what I could contribute to the world? And so that little voice, that fear, it got a little smaller. It got a little less frequent. And um, sooner or later, I didn't hear it anymore. Um, but it comes back every once in a while. And, and that's okay, because I've made friends with that voice. Because what I realize is when fear shows up and starts talking to me, it's really, there's, a, there's an underlying message that I need to look at. It's trying to tell me something, but I don't, I don't get the message that, or I don't, I don't accept the message that's trying to hold me back. I'm trying to find out, okay, what is this fear about? Where is this coming from? Why am I thinking it? Why am I feeling it? How do I use this to my advantage to move forward, to get out of my own way, Guys, it's time to get out of our own way. Sometimes we just block our blessings and stand in front of ourselves in such a way that we, we, we feel defeated. And, and no one's doing that to us but ourselves. And so here's the good news. If you're doing it to yourself, you can undo it too. Maybe you need a little help. Maybe you need a little time and effort, but we can unstuck ourselves. Um, so another thing that I think holds us back um, from really living out life in a large way 
and what holds us in this small space, I think is this whole feeling that we have about abundance. Abundance is your birthright. And abundance brings more abundance. So whether you think you're worth that salary or you think you're worth whatever you're offering, you are. And so you also have the right to get paid for what you do in a way that brings value to your life. And money is good for the good that it does. So if it means that you can level up somehow in your life, good for you because abundance is your birthright. Sarah, I see your hand is raised. I'm not, I don't want to ignore you. So what, what would you like to say this morning? Good morning. Uh, good morning. Um, so, so I, I totally hear what you're saying and I agree. Um, I think a lot of my um, issues have been surrounding winding up in jobs and this spans at least the last five jobs in 20 years um, where both men and women um, but particularly men have kind of bashed down on um, my voice. So, uh, and, and in fact, the book that I'm working on now, the grant proposal and book that I'm working on now, um, uh, uh, a tenured faculty member, a male said to me, well, do you think that will make a difference? <laughs> and your answer was? Um, uh, well, I said to him, it may not make a difference here. And in fact, it didn't. But I think the difficulty is, uh, it, it, and the dispiriting part for me, is it feels like I'm constantly swimming upstream and I'm exhausted sure. and completely demoralized sure. because and, of and these, you know, uh, these people who are so utterly lacking in ethical integrity and support. Yes. And I could go uh, on, but I won't. <laughs> no, uh, I want to say thank you for sharing. And I want to recognize your vulnerability and what you're sharing too. And um, here's what you need to consider. So what you just said, the last, the last thing you just said is really important, right? It's what they're lacking. It's what they are lacking. They're lacking the vision and integrity. And why, and, and, and I say this with a hug, Sarah, because I've been there too. Why do we let the opinion of few give us the impression that that represents the majority? Why do we let one person's opinion or a small group of people suddenly create in our minds this belief that that must be what everyone would think? And my response to that person would be, um, yes, I do think it'll make a difference because whoever needs to hear it will get the message. And that is the truth. No matter what, listen, I get it. You know, I've been there too. I, I said, I, I've said to myself many times, what do I have to offer? Even on, on this Monday morning mojo, every Monday morning, I'm like, is anyone going to show up? I don't know anymore. And, and I say to myself, does it matter? It doesn't matter because I'm not doing this for your approval. And I love to see these faces on the Zoom. And I love all of you who are watching live on Facebook. And I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how to interact with all of you at the same time. It's not easy. Um, and, and it's, it's you know, because I, I love people and I'm such a people pleaser. That's another thing we could talk about. Um, but yet, someone I trust that someone gets what they need to hear every Monday morning when I do this. I don't know who. I don't know how many, but that's why I do it. See, our, our talents are not for us. Our story isn't even for us. It's for them. It's for the world. So if I keep everything to myself, I've learned a lot in this 49 years, just as I know you have too, right? I mean, I've learned a lot through trial and error, through fire, right? Trial by fire. I have learned through my education. I have some, some interesting things to share. Shame on me if I keep it to myself. You have knowledge, Sarah, you have creativity and your book and your project is not for you. It's not for, it's, it shouldn't be for you to get the glory. Now, if that's the byproduct, you get some recognition and success and, and all those wonderful things that come with it, that's awesome. But it's because someone is gonna get what they need when they read it. And so, 
the naysayers next and and i'm not saying that that's easy it's a process and it starts up here first like it, that's a mindset issue where you have and it comes back to what i said this morning about being confident you have to be confident you have to own your stuff you have to be confident as you put that that it's a book you said right Mm -hmm. As you put that book out into the world, you have to be confident that there's value in what you wrote and that someone is going to get what they need when they need it. And sometimes the things that we give out, the wisdom, the knowledge, the support, the empowerment, it could be in the form of a conversation. It could be in the, in the um, uh, environment of a meeting, of a dinner date, of a book. It doesn't, it doesn't matter the medium the value in those words, in those connections with you, sometimes you'll never even know what it did for someone else, right? Because we don't always get the feedback, but that doesn't mean that the beauty didn't happen. And that doesn't mean the gift wasn't shared. So I'm just going to say, Sarah, you get confident about what you're putting out there and you believe because it's true that the person who needs it is going to get it. And it's, it's, it's certainly more than one. So don't let that little fearful voice let you pull back, right? No more playing small. Um, so I, I, I so appreciate you sharing that because I know that someone needed to hear that this morning too. So this this whole thing that we're talking about right it, this this like getting out of our own way and giving ourselves permission not to play small i think again it comes from a lack of confidence it comes from listening to our fear voice more than our powerful voice yeah, and i uh, think you also tell me i i i i um appreciate the message you are my go-to on monday I tell everybody <laughs> log in just find her um the part that i most I'm conscious of is trying to address the fears by doing something new, mm -hmm. something where I would normally go, Oh, I don't know. I never did that. Or why wouldn't you want to try that? You know? So my moment of looking at it sort of authentically is by saying, give it a go or find something that's really different that just, you know, put it there and try it. So I love that. And, and so what you're describing really is getting out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. And that's another thing that holds us back is, is that feeling of safety, right? Our comfort right. zone is a safety place for us because we know it it's natural and we get it and we understand it. Yet when we move out of our comfort zone, we open ourselves up to new opportunities. I mean, the thing about a comfort zone, and, and if you really think about this, the reason why it's comfortable is because not much changes in there. That's right. Yeah. right? Yeah. Even the temperature stays the same. So if you're, if you want new things in your life, the only way new opportunities and growth show up is with change. So we have to get out of the comfort zone for new things to show up. Now that makes a lot of sense logically, right? So emotionally we have to prepare ourselves for that. We have to prepare that, we have to prepare ourselves that we have the ability to do different things. We have the ability to do hard things. We've talked about this before on Mojo and that you have the skills and the tools that you need. And if you don't, you have also the ability to learn something to get you to the next level. So this whole thing about trying and learning something new is actually what we're designed for. We're actually, you know, as, as human beings are such curious species, right? So we need to open ourselves up to that a little bit more and say, why aren't I feeding my own curiosity? And why aren't I allowing myself to try new things and get out of my comfort zone? And maybe I have to learn and maybe it's a little bit awkward. Yet, what could be on the other side of that? Right. The, the, the um, risk taking that comes with that, as well as the feeling of safe or unsafe, you know, you drop back into Maslow's hierarchy, gee, we want to yeah. be safe. But how much of that risk will you take to get beyond what you know is your comfort level? It's yeah, that's a great question. And I'm going to say, I, I don't want anyone to think, although here I go playing small. I was going to say, I don't want anyone to think that, uh, see how I caught myself? That, oh, that's yeah. your heightened awareness. As you really get aware, you, ca you catch yourself and you're like, cancel. So here's what I want to say to you. 
you might need to hire a coach. And what I was going to say was, I'm not here to promote myself. This is not a commercial for coaching or hiring me. And it's not, but yet, well, what if that was the value of being with me every Monday morning is knowing Anna's a, Anna's a coach. She's got a lot of experience and, and education as a coach, and maybe she can help me. Maybe it's not me. Maybe it's any coach, right? I represent just the coaching industry. And so what some of us are talking about, are, it's not easy to do by ourselves, right? Why? Because, well, we'll talk ourselves out of it if we're not really ready to get to that next level. Or we may, the answers are there, but they may be a little camouflaged. And so a coach can really help you look at things from a different perspective. And some of this may be what you need, this partnering with a coach, to, because that is going to give you the support, the emotional support. It's going to give you the different perspective and a, a coach will help you with the right action plan, right? To move forward. Those steps, those actions are really where the change happens. The change just starts in the, in the thinking process, but what really makes change is in the action steps. And those action steps have to be, you know, a progressive uh, process long enough to see the change show up and then build the new habits around it. So, so yeah, I get it. It's not easy for us to do it on our own. That's why sometimes we need that, that support. Um, and again, you know, we're living in extraordinary times. So this is really where we're bombarded by information and we are bombarded by um, so many different messages and images and, and opportunities and challenges. And I mean, I, I got to a point right now where I, I'm not watching the news anymore. That's just my choice. I figure if it's big, I'm going to hear about it anyway. Uh, my, I, one of my daughters is like, we call her the roving reporter. So whether it's the traffic accident on the corner or the apocalypse, I'm going to know. So I'm good, you know, <laughs> but I just feel, I just feel and anything in between. Uh, and, and I, you know, and social media is always going to give me what I need to, I guess, whether I like it or not. Um, so for me, I just, I, I had to filter out some of those messages and, and, and it's not that I'm putting my head in the sand at all. It's that I'm trying to create my own reality here. And I'm trying to really give myself an opportunity to, to, you know, I think put my perspective where it can be used because I can't control a lot of the stuff happening out there. So I choose to put my energy where I can control outcomes, right? Through my career and my, my, my invocation really as, as a coach and all the things that I can do to contribute, whether it's to support you know, the companies that my Keller Williams companies or, and the people there or anyone in my community or, or whatever. Um, and I think, you know, that's a result of living in these extraordinary times. Um, and, and again, it's an opportunity to break out of old patterns. I think a lot of what we're talking about here is to help you recognize what are the patterns in your life, because those patterns, those habits, that's keeping you in a comfort zone too. And so with change comes new opportunity and growth. And so where do you need to start with change? See, transformation, that's what we're talking about, really. Transformation. Transformation starts in here. My transformation is not out there. My transformation is in here. And that's where your transformation lies. It's an inner game. So Rosemary Morello, I see you have um, something in the chat. And if you wouldn't mind coming on quick, um, you said that you've gotten um, some uh, confirmation here. And uh, not that you, I know you sent this to me privately, but um, just tell me if this is something that you think you needed to hear this morning, if that supports my theory. Um, yeah, I, I go on a um, Monday morning Bible uh, class. It's, it's what all of 20 minutes. And what she was talking about was being that you have to be faithful and consistent. And what you were talking about today is, is very similar to what she was saying. So for me, it was a confirmation of you need, you need to be um, to get rid of the fear and just, just, to, just to look forward and be faithful in what you're doing, whatever it is that you're doing. It's got to come from the heart. So it's all, you know, from the inside out and it's from um, that consistency that, that if you do what you're supposed to be doing, everything else will come. The I love that. Thank you for sharing. And you know why I love that you shared that? Because there's Sarah's confirmation. 
that someone will always get what they need. And that's the, that's why we do what we do. Because if Rosemary Morello got something out of this this morning that's going to help her, then I my, my purpose was fulfilled by doing this Monday morning mojo, right? One person. And I, I, I feel like it's more than that, but that's what it's about. And I think that, you know, for us, if our life is in alignment with what we believe is our purpose and mission or what our core values are, then that, that's living life out loud. And that is giving us, you know, an opportunity to really attract some big stuff in our lives. And, and um, Gabrielle Bernstein is someone that I admire and follow and have for probably years. I mean, I started following her before anyone knew her name, honestly. And um, she talks about her latest book is Super Attractor. And these are some of the things that she talks about in her book and how we need to be a mirror See, you can, this is a good place maybe for us to end this morning. You can only attract into your life what you are putting out. That's what we mean by being a mirror. Okay. And sometimes it's hard to hear this because it depends on where you are in your life, but whatever you are putting out is exactly what you are getting back in. So as you work to get out of your own way, and as you work to raise your level of confidence and to play a bigger game and to show up in your most authentic self and stop second guessing the things that you think and see and want to create, you will see how more of that abundance shows up in your life. That's what I mean when I say abundance brings more abundance, right? So that you are your own super attractor. That is, that is really the core theme in Gabby's book. So um, I, I put something on Facebook this morning at five o'clock that I, I would see all of you at 730. I had no idea what we were going to talk about. And I didn't at five, five o'clock this morning when I got up, I had I literally, I had a great weekend, enjoyed some friends and family this weekend. And um, I went to bed last night and went, oh, what are we going to talk about tomorrow morning? And I was like, I don't know, it's just going to come. And when I got up this morning, I was like, what are we going to talk about this morning? I don't know, but it's going to be good. And I made a cup of coffee and I, and I uh, came into my office and I sat down and I just started writing some stuff. So there it is. This is what, what we, we were meant to talk about. So I know we're going a little bit over, but I, I guess, uh, Michelle, what have you got to say this morning? So good to see your face. Thanks. Good to see yours too. Um, I just wanted to give you confirmation that somebody got what they needed. So I was at my last job for 26 years, very long, very great career. I was laid off in January, got a new job in June and that job ended last week. It was a terrible fit. It was horrible. I mean, I think I cried every day for weeks upon weeks upon weeks. And you said something, why do we let the opinion of one or few make us think that's the opinion of many? And that's what I needed to hear today. I needed to hear that that experience that I just had doesn't define or make me who I am. That just because they didn't see value in me and vice versa, that it doesn't mean that others won't see value, especially if I look through my history, that's not who I am. And I can't let those people you know, make me feel that way. And just because one person or, or a company didn't see the value in you doesn't mean yeah. you don't have value. Right. They're and just then, blind and to then, you. Yeah. Getting out of your comfort zone is exactly what I need to do right now to find my next adventure. Right. So thank you. I You're so welcome. Thank you for sharing. So here's the thing guys, right? What's, what's, what good is it to have connections if we don't use it? What mm. is, what good is it to have you know, um, these, these wonderful, powerful relationships, if we don't get benefits from it. So I'm going to put myself out there again. If any of you would like to have a free consultation with me, please take me up on that. Just send me an email at, uh, Anna Gibbs at kw.com. Super easy. And I also have access to some great assessment tools. We use them in the hiring process at Keller Williams. I've used them in my coaching um, career. And again, if you would like to take an assessment for free, I'll be happy to send it to you. There's uh, two different ones that would probably, um, I would start with uh, for you guys. 
One is actually, um, it's a Keller Williams tool. It's more of a proprietary assessment, but I, I find it to be really brilliant, honestly. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff that we can get from that about how you show up. Uh, and what, well, all these assessments, it's not an intelligence thing, it's assessing behavior mm -hmm. and it's assessing communication style. And it, what I love about these assessments, and, and I only will suggest ones that I have experience with, um, is that they reveal your strengths and they really, I think, start to clue you in as to how to use them to your highest advantage. Interesting. And I think that sometimes what it can do is, it, like I said earlier about own your stuff, when you see it in writing, I, I have had many experiences going through assessments with people where they're like, really, is that what it says about me? Oh, and I want you to own your stuff because when you're aware of it, now you can use it to your higher power. So uh, I'm being sincere about that. And, uh, you know, again, if I know of a particular company or whether it be mine or someone else is looking for someone like you, I would love to connect you. So take advantage of being my friend and being in this tribe and send me an email. And let's see if I can provide you with a little insight too, if you'd like. Um, Jill, I saw your comment in the chat too. So um, the difference very quickly, I'll say, between coaching and therapy um, is that some therapists can be coaches. Most coaches cannot be therapists. That's one thing that I'll be clear on. Uh, and I know where my lane is. However, a therapist is usually working with someone to help them go back and reconcile the past and move through some trauma. Um, and, and it's usually for someone who is really stuck and not ready to move forward or really, um, is, 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 um, their life is really, um, evidence of them being stuck is showing up in their lives a lot. Now, now someone who is ready for coaching can also have exactly what I just described happening in their lives. One of the differences uh, is that we as coaches believe that you, the client, has the answer. We're just here to help you uncover it. So coaching is just, um, I think, a process that really allows that person who's ready to step forward. It's all about taking actions. Now, in my particular experience, I do have some coaching uh, certifications and I've done a lot of work in helping people release emotional trauma and helping people reconcile past life, ex no, excuse me, not past life experiences, experiences in their past uh, that can help you move forward also. But it's really not therapy because it's all action-based. So we might go back and we might connect to an experience or a memory, and then we're gonna use that as a catalyst to move you forward. So um, coaching can be, in some cases, a quicker process depending on the work that you need to be done too. Um, so that's just my quick answer around coaching versus therapy. And I'm sure, you know, Google's our best friend. You can get a lot of information about that. Um, both, both though, provide you with tools to keep you moving forward, which is really at the end of the day, what is powerful about both experiences. So, um, I can't thank you enough for being a part of this community and for sharing everything that you share with me week after week. I know that we're a little over, so I'm going to, um, is there anything else anyone would like to share quickly before we sign off and start our day? I just love when the kind, when the kind of synchronicity that Rosemary was talking about happens, because that's been happening to me as I've been doing personal work in the last couple months. That's great. It's really cool. That. Yeah. And you know, here's the thing, it, it happens all the time. It's whether we're paying attention to it, right? Mm -hmm. So you, your awareness is heightened now. So you see it, you see it much more. That's awesome. Well, thanks for pouring into me. Thank you for supporting me in my growth and allow me to do what I can to fulfill my purpose, which I know is, is bigger than any of us. And just like I trust that it's the same for you, your purpose is bigger than any of us. And, uh, I'd like you to, if you can, take five minutes after I say goodbye and just sit in this for a minute and just think about something that you want to say is an action step from what you heard this morning. One thing, whether it's, you know, 
to send me an email or something else, whatever it is, I want you to take action on it and allow yourself to move forward in, in, in one way. And usually that first small step reveals the next step. So mm -hmm. that's, that's the action. That's the process. I love you. And I hope that you have, no, I trust that you will have an awesome day and I will see you back here next Monday. Thanks, Anna. <clears throat> All right. Have a good one. Have a great week. Thanks. Bye. You too.